Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dean Blackman Show. We've got a great show here today. Uh, over in L.A. is my, uh, on the line, is my uh, guest, featured guest today, the great Jabril Black, uh, the former uh, alumni University of Michigan defensive end, T- Tampa Bay Buccaneer football player from the NFL and uh, out there in sunny California with us here today. Uh, Jabrell, welcome to the show. Dean, it is an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, it is a, it is an honor today. Uh, you know, I've, as you know, you were on a show previously and uh, we did that uh Pre Michigan Ohio State Thanksgiving yes, yes, game, yes, yes, and uh, we'll we could get into that later, but uh, you know, yeah. But since then, yeah. since then, I've done a lot of shows on on the radio show here that I do, and uh, from topics of religion to I've had uh, comedians on, I've uh, uh, had uh, a host of people. We've done some real serious shows. I've had some brothers on topic of. Uh, bipolar and manic depression that it is now this time of the year to get into sports shows and uh, college football and uh, the cold here on the east coast and the nfl and no one better could i think of an authority on the game of football (laughs) than my dear friend Jabril right. Black, and I want to wish you and your family a, a very uh, Merry Christmas and Happy and a Healthy New Year, and all yeah. good all good stuff to you. Yeah, likewise. Uh, right back at you. Happy holidays. Thank you. So and, let's uh, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. So let's like let's said, uh, let's get right to it, man. Time. Let's get yeah. right to some football talk. We, what are we going to start with? Uh, NFL first. Let's start. Let's start with the NFL because it's heating up. Well, I, I've got a, I've got a hard hitting question for you right away. Uh, what, what I what I want to know is, will Tom Brady and Bill Belichick steal another ring? I mean, that, the pa- the Patriots the once question. the Patriots once again are red hot, clinching a playoff spot and a first round bye. Do you think those right. New England Patriots is, are going to go all the way? I mean, former Michigan alumni. We still love him. Tom Tom Brady, the guy is even more pumped up after having to sit out the first four games due to deflate gape. And is, is, is this guy, is this guy a force to be reckoned with come playoff time? So let's hear, let's hear it from you. Jabril is, is Brady and bill stealing another ring. You know what, Dean, I've, I've been looking at this team all year long and, I'm I'm trying to figure out the formula. Formula. I know it's Tom Brady, but I'm trying to figure out the Belichick mindset, where he just always has these good teams. And thing about it is, he pulls players that, you know, no one no one's heard of or you know hasn't been on the radar coming out of college. He gets these players and he coaches them up. He sets down a strict line of discipline that they they got to follow or they're off the team. And, you know, the players buy into it. And, uh, you know, and now here we are again talking about them winning the Super Bowl. Now, uh, it's a funny story. I don't know if you hip to this or not, Dean, but it's called the Madden curse. So uh, the Madden curse, uh, Madden is a football game, EA Sports. You know, they come out with a new football game every year. Uh, They've been around since, like, the 80s or whatever. So recently, Gronk Gronkowski was on the cover of Madden 2017. So every uh, every player that's been on the cover of Madden, almost mostly every player, when they're on the cover of Madden, they end up either getting injured or having a terrible season with low numbers or whatever. So when you look at uh, Gronk, he's out for the season 
but he was on the cover of Madden, so I thought that was crazy. Yeah, crazy, uh, crazy. The Madden, the Madden curse is coming in into fruition. But uh, I think you know uh, the Patriots; they have a big game coming up this weekend uh, against the Jets, and their defense is playing you know lights out and better than ever. And um, right now, coming into the playoffs, they look like the most completed team. I mean. When you look at the defensive side of the ball, when you look at Tom Brady, I mean, he's only being sacked, you know, 1.6 times, you know, per drop back. I mean, you know, you're giving Tom Brady time and you're giving him options and Edelman and, you know, all these guys and Bennett at tight end. I mean, <laughs> Dean, <laughs> it's, it sounds like a Super Bowl, right? Unbelie- mean- unbelievable that, uh, that these injury, you know, between injuries that happen – and every year, Belichick, uh, that organization that they always pull off, they bounce back. They pull off free agents that uh, players' careers uh, were either on the downside or or finished, and uh, right. they just make it happen every year. And uh, you know, Belichick on that sidelines, you know, being here in New York and the Jets and the Giants, that uh, you know, I wouldn't compare him exactly how I feel, but uh, when I see him on the tube against our New York teams, but. Uh, but he's pretty close to how I feel compared to those uh, oh, that line of Ohio State coaches over the years. You know, Ooh, how, you know, really? you know how I yeah. feel about those guys. You know, yeah, yeah, those guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, but you gotta give Belichick credit. I mean, he is the you know top guy in NFL coaching, and he has a a code that. Nobody's been able to really hack. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, when you talk about Mayweather and boxing, Mayweather refers to his defense as the Mayventi code that no one's been able to crack. So it sounds like Belichick got a, a Belichick code, a, a bill over there that nobody's ever. You know, I think uh, I remember when my son went to uh, Michigan. Uh, he's an 09 graduate, uh, uh, Jared. And I remember uh, always hearing the stories that Brady, uh, Brady didn't even start at Michigan. He didn't, but wow. uh, yeah, he didn't start. He was actually recruited by Coach Hoke, uh, who was my head coach at Michigan, and one of my head coaches at Michigan. And uh, yeah, Coach Hoke told us stories about Tom Brady. He said Tom Brady kept a notebook full of notes that he would just write, you know, constantly. And he, by the end of you know the season, he would have, you know, tons of notebooks due to his game planning, and you know, he took each game and. You know, we try to like fill up a notebook with of notes that he saw, and you know, even if he couldn't memorize everything, you know, it was something that he drilled into his unconscious, subconscious that, uh, you know, helped him out during game time. So, so uh, why don't so we, so why don't we move on and break down the rest? Of, you know, you seem very strong with uh, New England still in that AFC. Yeah, Who, I mean, who's there? Who's there? Why don't we break? Why don't you break down uh, the rest of the AFC? Yeah, let me, and how you how you see the uh, how you see the playoffs going uh, leading up to, I, I you know obviously it it seems like uh, uh, the Patriots are going to be uh, one of your uh, opponent one of the opponents in the AFC uh, championship game. Yeah, Who, I definitely bring I bring, definitely a, bring the audience that. along on how you see the rest of the AFC playoff picture. Yeah, I definitely see the uh, Patriots, you know, running away with the AFC. Um, but, you know, this weekend we have some really big, big time games. You got the classic battle of toughness, battle of heart, battle of brute, battle of everything when you see Pittsburgh versus the Ravens this weekend. Wow. Um, you know, that's this is a huge game. Uh, the Ravens and the Steelers is the highest stakes, I think, this weekend because if Pittsburgh wins, it clinches the AFC North. A Ravens win will pull off, uh, you know, they will have the same record and, you know, keep everything in contention, in contention for the uh, division crown. But, uh, you know, this is a big time game. The Ravens quarterback, uh, Joe Flacco, uh, you know, Ray Lewis said something interesting about him. He said playing with him, he never seemed like Joe Flacco was excited to play the game of football. And ever since Ray Lewis said that, I've been looking at Joe Flacco. I'm like, you know, Joe Flacco, you, you're not that excited. You know, you don't look, you don't look to have that, that ex, that killer instinct, that Mamba instinct that a Tom Brady has or a Russell Wilson has. 
Um, but that's going to be a good game. High stakes. Um, catch that game at 4.30 this weekend. High stake game. Pittsburgh versus the Ravens. Classic game. And then we're gonna look at the Cowboys, the hottest team in the NFL. So right you're now. gonna move over. You're gonna move over now to the Cowboys, and you're gonna yeah, you're gonna, gonna. I'm gonna set this up. I'm you're gonna, gonna break down. Up. Is is Dak real enough? Is he really uh, strong enough to win a Super Bowl? Uh, what would it be? Number five for the for the Cowboys? Yeah. You know, let's uh, let's yeah. let's break that down, yeah. Jabril. Let's yeah, let's the, let's talk the about Cowboys. the Cowboys and the uh, the NF the NFC now. The Cowboys are, to me, I think, I think they're real, Dean. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm gonna drink the, I think I'm gonna drink the Kool Aid of Dak and Ezekiel Elliott. And uh, I mean, when you look at what they're doing, I mean, Zach and Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, I don't, I don't like when you mentioned uh, Ezekiel Elliott, man. I know. That guy was. Uh, you know, I'm surprised know you even is. say that with a laugh and a smile, man. That just brings. Uh, no, it, it that hurts, just brings but... vomitosis to me when I uh, when I think of uh, him. Uh, he just just <laughs> just running up that field against uh, our boys, you know. Yeah, I mean, but he's he's he does it against everyone. And right. Now him and uh, Dak Prescott are making NFL history. They the first two rookies ever combination quarterback and running back to go to a Pro Bowl. So. I mean, they're the real deal. They're respected by their peers uh, enough to be voted into the Pro Bowl. And, uh, you know, this is a big matchup against the Lions. You know, that's kind of, you know, I spent some time up in Michigan, and the Lions are having a great season. So I know up in Detroit, you know, all my all my friends up in Detroit, they're loving that. Um, it's been great, great one, football but, town. Great, great town. Yeah. But Matthew Stafford, he's playing better than ever. Um, you know, he's thrown 3,700 yards. 22 touchdowns and uh Detroit needs a win to keep distance between Green Bay and uh before the Lions and Packers face off in the potentially NFC North Crown in the season finale. So this year this season is a um it's looking good as far I think you know one of the best playoffs pictures uh, we've seen in a while unless Dean unless the quietest team ever, Houston, who wow. is sitting at five and zero, oh, somehow against they're sitting five and zero oh out of nowhere against the um, AFC opponents. Wow! Wow! Yeah. So hmm. the AFC South, they're sitting five and zero. Oh. No one, you know, nobody's really been paying attention to <laughs> Houston, but if Houston beats Tennessee. If they beat Tennessee this weekend, then we're going to be looking at a pretty boring playoff picture because, you know, nobody's been paying attention to Houston all year. So wow. who wants to see Houston? We'd rather see, you know, someone else get in there. So let's hope that Tennessee, that Tennessee pulls through and prevails. We also got the Packers versus the Lions uh, uh, week 17. That's next week. Um, and then we got the game that nobody really cares about at all, Chargers versus the Browns. I don't even think that would be on TV. We're not going to talk about that. Then we got the Buccaneers versus the Saints. Jameis Winston, Mike Evans, my ex-teammates. Well, not not Jameis Winston, but Mike Evans. Uh, you know, playing, you know, they strung off a nice win streak, five-plus games. And, uh, you know, now they're, they're looking at a playoff uh, wild card wow. bird, a wow. wild card spot. And then if they win against the uh, the Saints – then uh, things are looking pretty good for them. And, uh, yeah, and then you got so, the Broncos versus So, the Jabril, it seems like uh, as you covered the NFC side, it sounds like uh, you mentioned a lot more teams in the mix than you did on the yeah. AFC side. Yeah, it's a lot more teams. I mean, when you look at the picture in the whole, I mean, this is a great – it's a great season to uh, to watch – you know, the playoffs, you know, especially if it, if you're a newcomer to the, you know, game of football, this is a great time to sit down and pick up on it because you're going to see some great football being played with great teams and great organizations and great management uh, from the top to the bottom. And, uh, yeah, like I was saying, when you see the Broncos versus the Chiefs coming up this weekend, it's a lot of um, noise surrounding Gary Kubiak because he attempted that 62-yard field goal 
against the Chiefs in week 12. Wow, 62-yard field that, goal. 62-yard. I mean, come on, Dean. Like, 62 when you yards. Tell, when you tell me that number, man, I remember uh, way back, way before you were even born. I don't even remember what year it was. Uh, I forget his first uh, name. I wasn't going to say the box of Jack Dempsey, but wasn't there a field goal kicker on the Philadelphia Eagles that I remember when I was a youngster? That kicked a uh, field goal in the, like, 62, 64 yards. I don't know what the record was. But his last name yeah, uh, might have been Dempsey. It was way before, you were, uh, way before you were born. So when you say that number for me for a field goal, I mean, uh, you know, you see 48, you know, 52. But when you start talking 60, man, that's, that, that's some distance, man. That's some leg. It was more than half the football field. And, Dean, you know, Charlie Brown got a better chance of kicking that field goal. You know, and they move the ball when he kicks. He doesn't even get the chance to kick. But 62 yards, I mean, you know, he went for that week 12 against the Chiefs. So now it's the matchup again week 16 with the Chiefs coming in red hot. One of the hottest teams in the AFC, Uh, you know, and uh, they're playing great. So this is... This is another good matchup. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Dean. This weekend. I am pumped, is... man. I, I said I had to get in touch with you that uh, yeah. it was it was time, this time of year, man. Yeah, uh, holiday weekend, uh, Hanukkah, Christmas at the same time, right. New Year's coming up. I had to get my right. boy Jabrell on, on the show, man. Talk about football yeah. and uh, get down to it. So uh, let me... Let me let's bring let's bring the uh, let's bring your perspective uh, let's round it all up as as it uh, it comes. There's no question the a the AFC you've got you've got the Patriots right up there. How about your yeah, pre- definitely- how about how about a, how about your Brills predictions? Who's who's going to be the Patriots opponent in My the in the a in the is... AFC in the AFC championship game? I. I see the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks. Uh, yeah, I see them. Um, you know, wow. I see a rematch of wow. Super Bowl. Um, of the last Super, what, what Super Bowl was that? I'm not sure. But I see, a, I see a rematch of Super Bowl uh, with the Patriots and the Seahawks. And the Seahawks. Uh, you know, I just think the Seahawks they they know how to win games and they know the importance of uh, certain games. And they know it's kind of like what you see in the NBA, what LeBron and those guys do. You know, they're not going to give you everything against the freaking Milwaukee Bucks. You know, mm-hmm. they they might even ask, can they sit out? And I think they did sit out uh, one of these games this year where they set out because, you know, just to rest. You know, you play you play all these games. So I think the Seahawks have, have that ability – ability to turn it up against certain opponents well i still and, have uh, i still have flashbacks i still remember uh you saw or you pictured uh, brady on the sidelines uh in defeat yeah. those last seconds and then all you know is uh the next play uh russell wilson isn't uh he had two chances to give it to marshawn lynch and passed it and the rest was history the interception right. and and uh patriots were champions yeah, you run the ball, and that's what Richard Sherman he was he was criticizing uh, the office of coordinator in the media recently, um, and he said that I don't understand why we continue to throw the ball in the red zone. I don't get it. Why are we doing this? I mean, haven't we not learned? Have we not learned, mm-hmm. Dean, that we run the ball, especially if we have Thomas Ross, who also graduated from michigan yes he transferred his fifth year to go to uh where'd he go eastern no west central michigan but he did graduate from michigan when you have thomas ross in the backfield one of the best running backs in the league give him the ball same thing with marshawn lynch you run the ball with marshawn lynch he's called beast mode dean unbelievable unbelievable so uh I think hopefully they freaking learn from their mistakes. And if that is the mass matchup, I don't know who I'm. I don't know who I'm rooting for because I got I got friends on both sides. I got uh, Thomas Rawls and Frank Clark, and then I you know Tom Brady and I don't know. 
I don't know who I'm rooting for. Dean. Okay, so be, uh... so so Jabril, you've got uh, you've got the cat the Dallas Cowboys going to the NFC Championship game, correct? Yeah, I I like I like the Cowboys. And who's I there? Like the who's who's who you predict? Who's their opponent in the uh, NFC Championship? Ah. Uh... You know, I don't know. I think the Cowboys, maybe the Giants, if they can, if, if the Giants can, you know, finish. Good. We're going to put the Giants can't be in there as their opponent. Yeah. They can't maybe be in the Giants, there. If they can finish. What you're saying is, what you're saying is the Giants are going to the Super Bowl. They're going to beat, uh, they're going to beat the Cowboys. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the Giants and, uh. I think they just, you know, they need to be consistent and they're play calling on offense. Um, wow, that back, that, 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 Beckham, that Beckham is so exciting. That guy is electric, right. man. Electric. He's, he's a, he's that a, guy is a, a man. that guy is a game game changer, man. Although he he did throw a temper tantrum um, following last night loss, and he. Uh, after the loss, he went into the locker room, and his teammates said it that he was growling and to himself, and uh, they had to they had to pull him back to the locker room to be with the team, and he was just you know throwing a temper tantrum. I don't right. know what's going on with Odell in those temper tantrums, but uh, I wish he I wish he would stop. I wish he'd grow up a little bit as far as that. I know he's still a young guy. Um, he's only twenty four, but. You know, those temper tantrums. You got to get out of that. You know, you got to be a graceful winner and you have to be a graceful loser. Yep. You know? Yep. So uh, let's uh, let's tie it up. What two teams are going to the Super Bowl? Two teams going to the Super Bowl. You can only pick two. Go ahead. Only pick two. Uh, let's see. What two? Patriots against the Giants. I can You know what, Dean? Hey, <laughs> I can see... I, that's, yeah, I say Patriots versus the Giants. I actually like that. Um, that's not too far fetched. I mean, when you look at Eli Manning, he knows how to turn it on in the playoffs. You know, he's been there before. He he gave you guys what two two Super Bowl rings. And, yeah. Uh, beat the Patriots yeah, twice. And beat, I, beat the Patriots twice in two of the biggest, uh, greatest uh, Super Bowls of all time. All right. So uh, yeah, I roll with that. I'll okay. Want to pick a winner? I'm going to go with, you know, I like the way. Patriots, the Giants, Giants, Super Bowl. Who wins the Super Bowl? I'm going to give it the edge to the Giants wow. because I love their D-line. Wow. I the, love their D-line. The audience, wow, the, the audience is going to be is is blown away by this. Uh, this is some discussion. Huh? The, yeah, gi- gi- the Giants, Giants are the Giants. Giants are Super Bowl champions this year against the Patriots. A third time to yeah. beat the Patriots. I mean, wow. I mean, when you look at the defensive line and the matchup against uh, you know, Tom Brady's offensive line, yeah, they're good, but you know, the last time you guys won the two Super Bowls against the Patriots, it was because of Strahan and Pierre Paul and you know, Canty and all those guys getting after Tom Breezy in the backfield. So you create that pressure on Tom Brady, he will crumble. And who's this year's uh, uh, NFL uh, MVP? MVP, I who's... think you got to give it to Ezekiel Elliott. Wow, I think, wow. I think I think Zeke, I think he, uh, you know, Dean, you got to get him. Man. Your Michigan I mean, alumni, man, they didn't like, they didn't Dean, like, they didn't like, uh, I just lost, uh, I must have just lost uh, Jabril. Uh, how many millions of uh, Michigan alumni did I lose on this show just <laughs> listen, now? Listen, huh? the, thing about, the thing about Michigan, man, we are people, we are men of reasoning. We are men of understanding. So we would be fools to say that he is not one of the most, value, the most valuable player on his team. We, we would be fools to say that, Dean. When you look at what he's doing, I mean, he, he's like 400 yards off of breaking – all types of uh, rookie records of Eric Dickerson and all these guys. I mean, come on. I mean, he, and the way he's running and, you know, Emmitt Smith is, you know, just giving him all the praise. Like, yo, I, you know, 
Jabril, I mean, he does he does have an amazing offensive line. To Jabril, me. I have the utmost respect for you and for your honesty because, uh, as I said from the day I set out this uh, show, uh, it was going to be full transparency. Keep it real, and uh, <laughs> I have a lot of respect for you that uh, that you're putting uh, Zeke Elliott as uh, this year's NFL MVP. Yeah, I'll give it to him. Listen, before we switch to the college football scene, uh, there is a, a favorite college football coach of ours by the name of Jim Harbour that uh, there's a hell of a lot of uh, talk of him uh, over the last month or two that he's uh, jumping ship, he's leaving Michigan, he's going to the Rams, and uh, want to hear what you have to say about that. Let's put those rumors to bed, Dean. Let's rest those rumors. Jim Harbaugh is not going anywhere. Jim Harbaugh is a stable in Ann Arbor. More, that is his holy city. That is his mecca. I mean, they call it Ann Harbaugh. You know, this is this is. <laughs> He's not he's not going anywhere. Uh, he released a statement saying that this is clearly I and I quote, this is clearly an attack from our enemies. We like to call them jive turkeys, end quote. Okay, so that's that's the quote that came from Harbaugh in his camp. I don't see Harbaugh going anywhere. I mean, when you look at the things that he's doing at Michigan, he's doing great things. Yes, we lost to Ohio State. Yes, we lost to Iowa. But it's 10-2. And, and if we weren't sitting at 10-2, and two, we would be calling for his head. We're not. He's doing a great thing. Um, you know, and if we look at recruiting right now, I mean, we had like a, a commit every two two or three commits every day this week. Something crazy. Uh, for us, and these are four-star guys. We had the top um, receiver, uh, Donovan Peoples, come out of Detroit, Cats Tech, who just committed, um, who is like – the next Julio Jones. So, I mean, come on, man. He's not going anywhere. I agree and with on top I agree. Of that, He got uh, Michael Jordan to sponsor the football team. Unbelievable. I, I agree with you. Harborough is not going anywhere. And I thought that was a, I too read this week, that was a, a classic, a great classic uh, statement uh, by him <laughs> that uh, these, these are these are just all all his enemies and Michigan's enemies uh, and and especially he lists those enemies as uh, those uh, teams all their recruiters uh, and uh, he looks at these en- enemies and we call them jive turkeys you know jive that's, turkeys that's day, huh? huh jive turkeys that's back in your day you probably ran across a couple of jive turkeys that's right <laughs> <laughs> I had plenty of jive turkeys, you know. <laughs> you know, we got to get you got to make a call to Harbor, man. He's got to stop yeah. talking to all these mainstream media outlets and he's got to get on uh he's got to get on my show eventually. Yeah. You got to yeah. tell him he's got to come on my phone. He's got to come on the show and uh, get off uh, this mainstream uh, media stuff and and come on a real show. Yeah, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get it there and talk to him. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> So why don't we why don't we move over to uh, the college uh, football uh, scene? How how it's winding down into uh, the uh, bowl games as well as uh, the college uh, championship series. How you uh, how you see that breaking down? I know uh, I know that uh, there is uh, one of the few um, one of the few. Ohio, uh, Ohio State uh, uh, alumni that I speak to here from Long Island, a, a, a friend by the name of Andrew Markinson. You know, he, uh, I was chatting with him the other day and he, uh, he's pumped up. He's pretty pumped up. He says, uh, he says, Dean, could you imagine if Ohio State beat Alabama that uh, the last time they were in the semifinal in the inaugural college football playoff back in 2014? Andrew says that if Ohio if Ohio State beats Clemson and Alabama is victorious against Washington, how amazing of a showdown will that be? That championship be Urban Meyer versus Nick Saban. Markinson says that that will be one of the ages. So uh, 
You know I, what? I gotta, the, I got I gotta throw at you with the Andrew Markinson. Uh, the only he's a great, he's a great young man. He's a really good guy, and he wanted to be on your show last time you were on for for the game, and he still says he's gonna come on, but he still hasn't. Still hasn't set a date with me. So, Tell him uh, don't be a jive turkey and get on the show. <laughs> Andrew Markinson, you hear what Jabril Black said. Stop being a jive turkey and get your butt on this show. But uh, this he's really he's really pumped up with a lot of energy. Uh, he said, uh, could you imagine uh, Nick Saban against Urban Meyer uh, for the championship? Yeah. I mean, what's your, I what's your actually, take on all this? You know, I mean, when you look at the college – playoff and you got Alabama, Clemson, Washington in Ohio. Um you know Ohio versus Clemson. Clemson but the thing about Clemson, I don't I still don't know how good they are. You know, which is so funny. I mean, yeah, they're ACC champions. Um but in, when you look at their season and you look at the teams that they're played and beat and uh their defense that's giving up so many points and all of this, I just don't see them beating Ohio State in their defense. I, I think uh, I think Ohio's defense is um, a defense that knows how to get after the passer. I like the way their defense played against us. I think they run to the ball well. I think they got great defensive ends to um, contain Watson. Um yeah, I just think their defense is going to be too much for Clemson's offense to handle. And uh, and definitely Ohio State's offense, I think JT is going to be too much for Clemson's defense. So I see Ohio State, excuse me, Ohio, I see them beating Clemson. And then when you look at Alabama and Washington, I mean, come on, then you can go out there and you can, you can beat Washington. I mean, their softest, you know, toilet tissue. It's yeah, well, we, we both feel Michigan should have been in that spot, right? Yes. I mean, you know, it's it's like I, I do see the playoff stretching to probably eight teams because when you look at, you know, Michigan and, you know, the teams left out, I mean, you know, even Penn State, I think they could have, you know, glanced in there and made a run. I mean, they, they became an exciting team towards the end of the season. But I definitely do see uh, – I agree with your friend. I do see Alabama – versus Ohio in the uh, national championship just because those are the two best teams. And uh, when you look at the conferences that they're coming out of, they've been playing stiff competition all year long. I mean, week in and week out, you know, Ohio being in the Big Ten, Big Ten being the top premier conference this year and the, and last year. Uh, when you look at, uh, you know, the bowl games, you know, in the top ten and all these things, Big Ten. So, yes. Jabril, I find it I find it mind-boggling and crazy that Alabama is looking for their fifth championship in the last yeah. eight years. Isn't that annoying? I mean, like, not just college, but any any of the four leagues, uh, professional leagues, anything in sports. I mean, that is uh, that is really crazy. Yeah, I mean, that is crazy. Their fifth championship in their last eight years that's unbelievable yeah i don't i don't know what they're doing i don't know what's in the water down there but nick saban knows how to groom and uh shape and you know uh really bring out the best out of his players i mean um it i don't know what to say because every time i look up they're in the national championship and it's just like what what like what happened and they they just win the games and you know, their defense scores. Their defense, Dean, not their offense. Their defense scores a touchdown almost every game. And sometimes they score two touchdowns. Their defense, Dean. They don't – you don't run plays on defense to score touchdowns. You can try to defend the offense from scoring. So their offense – Alabama's offense sometimes will go – can go a whole quarter without touching the field because their defense is scoring touchdowns. Hmm. So when you have a defense like that, and you can hang your hat on that. And at the end of the day, you know, you take your coat off and relax, put your feet up. Oh, I have a great defense. I can score touchdowns. Then, yeah, you know, it makes sense why Alabama is always in the national championship. I so mean, so a, a Nick Saban sits in a house uh, with parents and a, and a recruit. Uh, I mean, all he has to say is uh, 
uh have you seen our defense do you want to do you want to win a championship right i mean do you want to win and then the thing about it is it's becoming beneficial for guys not to transfer away from alabama because in practice you're still practicing against four and mostly five star guys so you know, it's, it's still beneficial for you not to even transfer because scouts, so many scouts are coming to their practice and they're almost like a mini development league for the NFL, Dean. This is crazy. I mean, these Alabama's the real deal. Um, but I do see... I hate to say this. I, I see the matchup between them on Ohio being a great matchup. Wow. I see Ohio beating them. Wow. I'm going to go against you, Jabril. I know. I'm, I'm I know, picking I I'm pick, I'm picking Alabama. I, I believe hey, Dean. And that's I, not how I, I, I and that's not how I feel about Ohio. I'm I'm being a football person and I uh yeah. I think I, uh, I think Al- I think Alabama is getting their fifth championship. I, you know what, Dean? If it happens that way, I think but the thing I'm looking at is I just I I don't think Alabama's offense is good, but I think Ohio Ohio's defense is um, a lot better. And when you look at their secondary, and when you look at their defensive line, and then when you look at JT um, and his ability to you know run the ball, and you know Samuel, and I just think when you look at their ability to run the ball with JT and all these guys, I think they match up well with. Alabama's defense. Not to say they're gonna put up crazy amount of points, but I think it's enough. It's gonna be an entertaining game, to say the least. Let's okay, say. so Ohio State. I'm sorry, Ohio against Alabama. You're picking Ohio, and I'm picking Alabama. And we shall see. We shall see. Okay. Why don't but let's we let's talk about Michigan? Yeah, let's talk. Let's you want, let's talk about Michigan's game. Um, let's see how that sets up and against Florida State, and also I think. Uh, because of your background, I'd like you to, uh, besides the Michigan Florida State game, to shore up, uh, you know, how big is this bowl season for the Big Ten? You know, just a tremendous resurgence uh, of the power conference that's going on in the Big Ten. I'd love you to chat yes. about that as well. Well, let's, yeah, when you look at Michigan versus Florida State, I mean, you know, two story programs, two great colleges, two great, you know, uh, fan bases clashing in Miami, Florida, no other place. I think, yeah, Michigan just finished up their last practice. They're headed down there. They, I think they headed down today. They should be down there uh, in Miami. And, uh, yeah, I, I've talked to a couple of my younger teammates uh, that I play with, uh, a couple of seniors, and, you know, they're a focused bunch. They down there. You know, their last loss to Ohio hurt, and uh, they want to leave on a high note. We got a lot of guys coming back just for that. But uh, they're going into this Florida State game uh, focus. I think offense is going to be um, a key in this game. You know, when you look at what Spate did against Ohio, he threw a lot of interceptions, and you can't do that against this Florida State defense. I mean, they have you know great defensive backs that can cover our receivers uh, man to man. But I think uh, physically, we'll have to out tough them in the run game. When you look at Florida State, um, they have a great young quarterback. Um, who was t- a tough guy, and uh, you know he continues to make plays for them. But all- their offensive line is very weak and very young, uh, very athletic, but very young. I think our defensive line should have a field day of uh, a lot of sacks. We call it a sack party, all right? Party at <laughs> the quarterback. Uh, offensive linemen getting tossed around all types of ways. Um, a lot of plays on defense I see in that game for us. I think Michigan blows them out uh, by a landslide. Um, What's a score prediction? I say forty-five-seven. Wow, forty-five-seven. Wow. Yeah, I say forty-five-seven. I don't think it's going to be close. Um, don't get me wrong, Florida State. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, yeah, uh, don't get me wrong. Florida State is, you know, a great team, but um, great players. But I think, you know, when it just comes to scheme and coaching, I think we're top echelon how about the the rest of the uh bowl picture for uh for the big 10 yeah bowl picture i mean you got maryland versus bc boston college you got minnesota versus washington state 
Northwestern versus Pitt, Indiana versus Utah. Shout out to Indiana. My brother went there. Indiana versus Utah, uh, second bowl game of the year, even though they got rid of their coach, Kevin Wilson. Uh, he was abusing the players, Dean. And the crazy thing is, my brother told me he used to do crazy stuff like that all the time. So Coach Wilson was abusing the players, and the players came up and spoke against Coach Wilson, and they got Coach Wilson out of there. So wow. kudos to IU administration for handling that situation. Uh, then you got the Capital One uh, Orange Bowl, which is Michigan versus Florida. Franklin, um, Motor City Music Bowl, Nebraska versus Tennessee, Fiesta Bowl, Ohio versus Clemson. And then Wisconsin versus Western Michigan, which should be a fun one, the Goodyear Cotton Bowl. And then you got the Outback Bowl, Iowa versus Florida, and the Rose Bowl out here in Pasadena with Penn State versus USC. Wow. So these are these are some good Big Ten matchups. Um, like I said, I think the last two years the Big Ten has been proven as dominance over these other conferences. And, um, you know, this is a big year for the resurgence in of the Big Ten because when you look at the matchups against, you know, Pac-12, SEC, um, you know, ACC, and even a elite MAC team as in Western Michigan with Wisconsin, you know, if you're going to prove that we are the you know, elite conference and, you know, we take great pride in, you know, being Big Ten country, then we have to come up and, um, you know, win these games and, you know, come out with a lease. I think we go, let's see, how many bowl games is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten bowl games. Dean, I'm predicting a whole whole record of, I think we can go at least, I don't know, seven and three. Wow, wow. That'd be amazing. Seven That'd be amazing. Eight, eight, eight and two. Wow. Yeah. Give or take. I mean, okay. you got Nebraska versus Tennessee. That's a pretty good one. So, Well, great take on the college picture. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at the time. Things are starting to wind down for us on this show. And as you know, you're you're invited. Uh, anytime you want to come on, you're always, I'll be in, back. you're always invited. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you're back east here one time to actually yeah. come into the studio Let's here uh, live and uh, right here in the studio. So instead of doing it... Uh, by way of being in L.A., but uh, I'll take you any way you can do it. My man, Dean. But listen. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Dean. My, show, my shows are extremely spontaneous as well, and uh, moving across um, what's happening uh, on the field and predictions in college football and in the NFL, uh, I thought it would be uh, appropriate to... Uh, our last discussion uh, on this particular show that uh, one of the hottest uh, stories in the news these days is uh, sports related and college football related. And that has to do with the Wake Forest football scandal. I'm sure you're aware of what's happening down yeah. there. Okay. So I, I just, you know, once again, I'm, I'm just throwing this at you that, uh, the more I uh, research it, I'm just, uh, this is, you know, this is just has huge repercussions out there. Uh, it's being, uh, it's being called wakey leaks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for any, all my listeners that aren't aware of this Wake Forest football uh, scandal, let me set you up. I mean, uh, there was a sports media, uh, you know, just taken right out of USA Today, there was a sports media assistant football coach that turned radio announcer who allegedly leaked details about the Demon Deacons upcoming game game plans to their opponents. I mean, it's that yeah. is crazy. Right. I mean, this this was an announcer, Tommy Elrod, that used to be an assistant coach. He played football at Wake Forest in the 1990s. You know, he's been fired since, uh, you know, Louisville's athletic director, Tom Jurek, has confirmed that Elrod gave secrets to his team this season. Um, mm. I mean, this is just this has even this th throughout professional sports, college sports, um, you know, Elrod uh, as an assistant coach, then an announcer. I mean, he leaves behind. Uh, what he leaves behind are such concerns 
that are numerous and 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 troubling. I yeah, I, I just yeah. thought I just thought you and I I thought this is this is a, a huge. The last two weeks, this is just big, and I, I I just thought it was appropriate to close the show. That listen, you uh, you uh, co- you were a college and a and a foot and a professional football player. I mean. Right. Uh, you know, students, alumni, fans, sponsors, you know, all the participants uh, that are on the field, I mean, uh, kind of duped into believing they were watching, you know, an honest competition and they when, when perhaps they weren't. You know, I mean, uh, you know, did, I mean, did you know, you know uh, did, El, did Elrod set this up? Uh, you know, is this, did, did he want such revenge against wake forest and the athletic department that fired him um i mean what's i keep talking and sometimes my wife uh sometimes my wife listens to all you know my wife sharon who you haven't met yet uh after every show we she she listens again plays back every show and she critiques every show so i got a i got a feeling if i don't keep quiet this is going to be one of those shows where she told where she tells me uh <laughs> dean you spoke you, you spoke too much <laughs> give <laughs> give jabrell a, a chance but i i wanted to bring this up story because this is uh more than a football story it's it's big news and uh i wanted to get your feelings on it personally and uh also, as today, a spectator, a fan of the game, and also a former collegiate and pro football player. So I'm going to stop yeah. talking. Yeah. I, you know, uh, Dean, for him to break that uh, covenant with Wake Forest like that, it, it, it shows that he's been doing that. And, uh, you know, what you do in the dark will come to light. So I don't think there was ever any... Whatever Wake Forest did to him to have him to have so much animosity and envy and um, no self pride and just left him like that, where he would, you know, take the game plan that coaches dedicate their lives to and players dedicate their lives to as well, um, even more so to coaches, and um, and just throw it all out to the wind for other teams to look at. I mean, it makes no sense. Um, but at the same time, it makes a lot of sense of a person who really doesn't value uh, what the program stands for and doesn't have any, you know, doesn't rest his hat on tradition and, um, you know, family morals. Um, okay, so so let me set you up that uh, that uh, let's say you were playing at Michigan. And you're in your you're in your second season at Michigan, and uh, second or third season, and this type of uh, news broke. I mean, uh, all the games that uh, that you lost in the past. I mean, you got to give as a player uh, back then, and a young man that you were and still are. I mean, exactly what are those? Uh, you know, Wake Forest players what are they feeling and uh, not only that but you've got to not only the wake forest players today but uh you got to go back three years now (laughs) then they're gonna feel hoodwinked and bamboozled right (laughs) they i mean it's just like yo you mean to tell me i i went to i went to practice uh even even on this you know even more detail you mean to tell me i kept my grades up I went to school. I gained all this weight to move to this position. I changed my diet. I ran this much. I put in this much work and countless hours of work. And you mean to tell me that you guys gave up the game plan that I was in, where I was putting my abilities to the test? Do you mean to tell me that? Mm. And you just gonna you just gonna give it up and not care about? anything and everything we were talking about in the locker room or we said in the team meetings, it was a lie and it was falsehood that you built pretty much this program around, you know? So, yeah, I mean, it's hard to, it'd be hard to trust another, you know, coach, collegiate co- coach in that manner. Uh, you know, then you've got to, you've okay. got to, you know, even, even their opponents, whether it be Louisville or going back over the last three years, per, you know, participating in that. 
Yeah, I mean, that's it's just a lot of shady. It's people. every it's everyone. So whatever the case is, I've got a tremendous love for college football and like uh, all walks of life and all industries. Uh, there's always uh, a few that uh, that ruin it, right? It's always a, it's always a few. That's that's what always. it is. But uh, listen, I I really want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, for coming here today. I really did a great uh, thank you, Dean. Great I had, uh, and I and I want to I want to ask you: Is there anything else that you uh, that you want to talk about that we didn't cover? No, that's it. I mean, you know, big week of football, fun week. I hope everybody uh, have a safe holidays and you know spend time with your family. And that's the true meaning of holidays, you know, spend time with your family and uh, embrace their company and presence. And Dean, I'm wishing you and your family a great holiday. Um, hope you guys enjoy each other's presence and that there be peace with everyone. Absolutely. And uh, in in closing, as I make my closing comments, uh, once again, it's been Jabril Black, uh, former great uh Student alumni, defensive end of the Michigan Wolverines. Go blue. Go, Go blue, blue, Jabril. Okay? Blue, and, and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But uh, just a class act, a dear friend of mine, and uh, an aspiring actor, correct? Yes, sir. Right? Good to see you on the, on the movie screens one day. But uh, once again, happy holidays to you. Happy New Year. And uh, I just... Uh, I'd like to hear from uh, all our listeners. Our listeners can reach out to us with the free text number for U.S. residents, which is 631-372-8849. We'd love to hear from all of you. Include your name and location. We will mention you on the show. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and to hit the subscribe button on the show's YouTube channel. If you'd like to leave a comment, use the box below. We are also, all shows are now archived and podcasted, all past shows, on the Apple iTunes platform. If you'd like to share your story, ideas, and be a guest on the show, go to deanbleckman.com and email me directly. I would like to thank all my listeners for being with us today. From all of us at The Dean Blackman Show, have a great day. You've been listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.